about to get bit. We are about to get bit. Oh, he's there. I got him. I got him. I got one. This is, oh my God, it's huge. It's huge. This is what I've always been dreaming of. This fish right here. Got him. Got him. Nice fish. That's a nice one. Oh my God. That thing just attacked it. Oh my God. It's huge. Holy crap. Oh my God. No, he's leaving. He's totally leaving. Oh my goodness. That is the fish I've been dreaming about my entire life. <sighs> so here we go again, everybody, embarking on another trout species challenge. I've been wanting to do this trip for a long time. This is an area that I hold near and dear to my heart, and I could not wait to get this thing underway. We're in a beautiful place. We got five species to chase, and it's go time. Well, I had to change shirts. I had to put my lucky fish catching shirt on for lake number one. Went from the flannel, which was a little bright. This is a game of stealth out here. So I went to the mountains and moose. Obvious go-to already. Safety first. Come on, right here. Good boy, good boy, good boy. We came to a lake where we had some options. And the thing that we were really targeting on this lake in particular was brown trout. Now the species of brown trout, which come from Europe, were introduced into the United States back in like 1883. And within about 50 to 100 years, they'd made their way all the way across the United States. And around 1912 to 1920, they were introduced into the mountains of Central Oregon. And up to this point in my life, brown trout in Central Oregon and in the Pacific Northwest have completely eluded me. I've caught some really nice ones down in South America. I've caught some on the East Coast of the United States, but I've never got some in my homeland of Oregon. And I am chomping at the bit to get this underway and try to accomplish this goal. Yeah. Okay, one thing I can tell is true about five minutes after being here is the wind's blowing hard and it's gonna be a huge pain in the ass uh, to be doing any kind of casting that requires feel really, especially that twitching jig. I know the twitching jig is gonna shine on this trip. We got five days of fishing, but I need to stay true to the things that work the best and the kind of conditions that we're given. If I have even a slight chance of getting all these fish. So the wind's blowing hard, that tells me to troll. I can't feel well, I can't cast well. What I can do well is conserve battery and work these bank lines where I know these fish are gonna be hunting. And it's a little bit midday, so I think once that sun goes down a little bit, we might start getting, so I can already see some, some uh, shaded area of the lake from the wind. So we'll get this troll on a little bit. I'm going with KCP. Obviously, alma mater. Is there anything else to fish, really? Uh, but I'm going orange KCP. I'm gonna go with the bronze dodger. And uh, I'm gonna send this thing down and see if we can find ourselves the first fish of the day. Let's do it. Got him, got him, got him, got him. First fish. Didn't take too long. Feels like a nice one, though. Feels like it's got some good size to it. Oh, what if the first fish of the trip was the fish we were after? I have a feeling, especially in the country we're in, it's gonna be just like the last trout series that we did. The uh, giant rainbow trout was the nemesis. I've never gotten so tired of catching giant rainbows, trying to get, you know, trying to catch a goldfish like this one. But if this was a brown, I will be tickled pink. Come on, what are you? I'm seeing some pretty light colors. Big rainbow, really nice rainbow. Species number one checked off the list. Wow, what a nice fish. It's funny how this little setup, and it's kind of like, kind of what trout fishing is all about. You kind of have your little routine and you stick to it and you can ultimately kind of take it anywhere in the world and uh, find fish with it. And this is it for me, that KCP setup, that orange little cup plug at the end there. Beautiful fish. Okay, buddy. Thank you for being the first. Yes! Fish number one down. Nice rainbow, that's one checked off the list. I'd like to catch a trophy rainbow on this trip. That's a real goal for the rainbow. So that one, is, it counts, but it kind of doesn't count, but it counts, and it counts. But that's fish number one of the day. 
Really haven't fished that long either. It only took a few minutes, probably about 20 minutes of trolling. Once we finally got focused in and stopped going in circles, we started getting them. Let's keep moving. Is that a fish right under me? Ooh, okay, we're in the game now. I stole Sean's glasses because they're the good glasses and he put on mine. He looks like a total badass right now. And we're deciding because of what we just saw, we saw a couple fish go by, uh, or correction, Sean saw a few fish go by. We're gonna start cruising this inside, this real shallow, and just slowly work it and use our eyes and see if we can visually fish these fish, try to get them on the fly rod and also the twitching jig. So that's kind of the action I came here for. That's what I wanna see. And I know these browns are up in these shallows eating bait. So let's start moving, stand up, start moving down the bank and see if we can't find the fish with our eyes. Oh, I see him right there. I see one right there. He's following our stuff. Oh, he's coming one. Oh, God. Take it. Not the biggest trout, but it's a trout. It's action. It's the kind of action we're looking for. Oh, there's one just jumped right there. Yep, that was the cast. So one thing I can already see is a lot of big structure here. Oh man, those might actually be a fish that is another goal on this trip. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna say yet until I have them in my hands. But there's some nice wood structure right here. These fish are all swimming up and in and living up and in. Oh, he had it, he had it. Come on, eat it. Oof, just had a quick in and out there, in and out. So the coolest part about this, you guys, and this is not a sales pitch, but what I'm already loving again about a trip like this is having this kayak. To be able to do what I'm doing right here, I'm literally standing, hunting these fish. I don't have the depth finder set up for today's adventure but I'm literally hunting down the bank looking for big structure, like this big, these big pieces of wood where I'm seeing these fish roll and just kind of live around. And I'm just cruising the bank, using my eyes, using my glasses, finding the structure, stopping, spot locking, casting at it, moving on, finding a new spot. So let's see if that pays off. We're kind of getting into the witching hour here. It is like the perfect time of the night for a fish to be coming out. I feel like I got the right fly, got the right boat, got the right setup. Just don't have the right fish yet. Oh, that was a really nice fish up by the bank there. One just, a, ni a nice one just ate a dry. Real nice one. Eesh. What a beautiful evening it's turning into. It's wind, wind out in the main lake is still kicking ass. But I will say, since I just pulled in and started doing this, and started paying a little more attention to one specific area of water, I'm starting to notice they're rolling all over the place. So, just saw a really nice, what looked like a big rainbow. Might have to switch to a smaller fly or a, or a dry even. Maybe dry dropper. Another jump, another jump. Oh, right, that one was right in front of the cameras. If I don't hook this one, I am switching my fly. They are literally rolling everywhere. I gotta figure this out. Another one, just roll right there. Oh my God, they are rolling everywhere. Oh, dang it, rod holder got me. There we go. That was right in the middle of them. Come on, put on that smaller little like fly larva or uh, um, caddis pupa, if you will, uh, pattern. This is a small little black fly, little tungsten head. That should get the job done here with whatever these are. These very well could be browns, just little baby ones. But I'll take it. I'll take it in the sense of accomplishing our goal day one. Got him. Got him. Got him. Whatever it is, I got him. Well, fish number two, another rainbow. Just a little stalker guy. Not a wild one or anything, but a beautiful, beautiful little rainbow. Fish number two of the day. And what I'm saying as I'm coming through here, guys, is it's driving me nuts. There are so many freaking trout jumping in here. And most of them really do look like about this size, if not smaller. Um, this is near the boat ramp once again. So this is where a lot of those stalkers are gonna be getting dropped. And that's what we have here. Just a little baby, it's got that pond rub. 
I'll see you later, guy. Go, 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 go up. Something like that. But anywho, one thing I'm seeing here for sure is that's a lot of little fish around. So I think I'm going to go back to Troll News Rapalas for just a couple minutes more. Then we're going to get some dinner in us and then head back out here for the witching hour. That last light, that really low light hour of the day. It looks like we've got about a half a moon tonight. So we're going to have good moonlight uh, and a very clear sky. So we'll make one more pass, get some grub in our belly. Welcome everybody back to Kanigi's Outdoor Alpine Kitchen. Today, we have a very special recipe, a very, very special salmon that we caught right before we came on this trip, right here. Bestest and reddest sockeye in the world. Right there, beautiful. I got a really cool special recipe I'm gonna try here for you guys today. But first, we're gonna start with just the, the saison. This is basically just the basic base seasoning. I'm gonna use this on almost every recipe. It's just your normal season salt. And a uh, little shout out. Mr. Marlin out there and to a lot of you addicted fans that love following along with the catch and cook style stuff We are going to start working on a cookbook and we are going to start working on seasonings So we got some big stuff coming your way, but this is going to be a really fun Asian inspired Style of a fish tonight and this is something I actually haven't ever tried but I've always wanted to so this is a Walla Walla sweet onion I'm basically making a sweet onion teriyaki salmon in a way I'm putting it over a few things We're going to have to wait and see what those are, but this is what we're doing but we'll do some nice pretty slices of this sweet Walla Walla Sweet. And if you guys have never had a Walla Walla Sweet, they are some of the best tasting onions in the world. But I'm gonna put this under the sauce that I'm about to make. Give it just a nice little, little lay of some stuff here. A little bit that way, a little bit this way. No one's prejudiced. Oh yeah, that's pretty. And that's a pretty fish right there. There we go, there we go. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do goes in this little guy right here. First things first, I'm gonna take some fresh picked blueberries. I'm gonna drop them right in the bow. Why not, let's go a little bit more. I'm gonna squish the crap out of these little guys. Get them nice and busted open. Try and get each one squished. Next, nice little dollop of mayonnaise. Squirt of sour cream, a little bit of the Korean barbecue sauce. Found this stuff at a, at a specialty shopping center the other day. Should be just about enough right there. Absolutely love that stuff. A little bit of ghost cream for some heat. A few of these diced up shallots in there. A little small little dash of the seasoning salt in there. And we're off and running. Now you just gotta whip it up. Just whip it good. A little bit of blueberry infused Korean barbecue sockeye salmon. Yep. On the fish we go. Well, that's blueberry beautiful if you ask me. Holy cripes. It should taste very nice. We went and uh, actually found these Walla Walla onions on the side of the road. I dropped up off of a semi. Found the blueberries, picked them ourselves, killed the salmon with them bare hands. All we bought was a couple other things that we could have made pretty close to a self-sustained meal here. All right, let's get this thing on the barbecue. Get the rest of our meal made. Mm. Mm. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, will definitely make a turd. Let's see here, the moment of truth. Looking dead sick, sick. That's my color, I'm edge, I'm drooling. I saw a piece of a berry. Smells amazing. Tastes like heaven. Rewind, every play. That's a keeper. Okay, well, I killed it. I'm taking the belly. Gotta get fattened up for tonight's mission. It's gonna be a good one. Oh wow. Hands down, one of the new favorite recipes. Yes. 
little after dinner cup of joe. Get me kick started for the night bite. The witching hour is upon us. It's time to go witching. So Brown Chow are notorious for eating late in the evenings and at night. And this is actually a lake, one of the only lakes in the Cascades where you can actually fish at night. So that being the case, we launched the kayaks, we're out on the witching hour, and I think we're gonna find some fish. Okay, witching hour is upon us. Getting pretty calm out here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Still seeing some fish rolling, still seeing white calves off yonder. So I think to start, we start trolling a little bit. I'm gonna start trolling a couple of uh, of those little Rapalas and I'm just using those typical old school Rapalas here. I think that's the smartest move though. That'll be my easiest way to catch them. If I do start to see some action on the surface uh, and or anything else moving around, we're gonna switch away from this and go to the jig or the fly rod. And away we go. I'm gonna start off working back towards where I know these Hatchery fish have been stocked. I know these big, these big brown trout are predatory. The things that they're gonna be eating most this time of year is other fish. There's a lot of small aquatic life in here this time of year. So get that back there about a hundred feet, start moving. Sadly, while flying the drone, just uh, broke off my best plug, the one I was really hoping to have for the evening. But that's how life goes. Sometimes you win, sometimes you break shit off. So we're going, we're going old school here. I've also heard that these bad boys like to eat these right here, rooster tails. So I'm gonna put my rooster tail on. I'm gonna throw it back there behind me with that there swivel in the line. And uh, I'm gonna drag this thing around for a while, see what happens. Bombs away. I'm kind of just trying to fish it like I would chili. You know what I mean? Just kind of all up in the brush. One of the only places I've had a lot of success fishing was in South America and Chile. And this is the exact same kind of lakes we fish, exact same structure on the banks. Find the wood, really, that was all it was. Find trees or find wood in the water and go fish around them and that's that's where I caught them. Um, so I'm kind of figuring it'd be the same thing here. You know, these big browns up under all this structure and all this wood, they're right off of a big deep shelf so they can spend all day down in that deep safe water, like deep cold water really. And then in the evenings they come up and cruise these banks and eat all these little baby fish that are living up here along alongside the shore. So I figure because we can, in the name of science, and because we can, and because we still haven't caught one, we'll probably put it out, put out a pretty good effort here until about, I don't know, 11 or midnight when it's actually pitch black. The moon's already risen, so hopefully there'll be a little bit of moonlight. Really it's gonna just kind of come down to whether or not we can see a damn thing. So keep our fingers crossed. At least I kind of have a bearing of where uh, where camp's at. Just keep following the bank, I guess. Got him. Oh my God. It's gone. Oh, that felt brownie. That felt brownie. Oh, that was a smash and a half. A ham sandwich, if you will. Oh, and the way it hit too. Super, extremely aggressive. Very iconic of a brown. Crap. Okay, well that was a good sign. I'm getting into some pretty heavy wood here. Just gonna keep trying. Oh, I hate treble hooks. I hate you treble hooks. <sighs> treble hook off, I'm just running one hook now. I feel like I hang on to a lot more fish that way. I feel like that top hook a lot of the time, one, gets you tangled, two, pulls the other hook out of the fish's mouth. These fish are gonna be attacking these things, they're pretty pretty vicious creature, so I believe that one hook is gonna work. Witching hour, almost no light left. Oh, got him, that's a brown, that's gotta be a brown. Oh, wow. Oh, smash a Rooney. 
Holy canokes, that thing smashed it. Kept them hooked though. What do you know about that? Okay, bringing them around. Little's interested. Once again, it's gonna be another one of those, another one of those trips where we curse the stalker trout because it ain't what we're looking for, but it's all we're catching. Can't complain about that though. Beautiful wishing hour fish. Nice little rainbow. See you later, dude. Yep, there goes that one. Uh. Oh, whams in this kitchen. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Well, it's about 10 o'clock. We still got a tiny bit of light, amazingly enough. Being that it's still July here, we got a, a ton of light. But what I'm noticing is the wind is not dying. It's almost getting stronger now. I'm sure you guys can hear it in the microphone. And ever since it's gotten pitch dark, we haven't got a single bite. I got those last couple bites right at the end of witching hour there. The sun seems to, or the moon rather, is setting rather than rising. So it's gonna be back behind the trees here in just a minute. It has been a long day. It's been a 14 hour day at least getting down here. Tomorrow is a big day and it's imperative that we're on the water super early for the fish that we're going after tomorrow. Should be the biggest one of our trip. Should be the most awesome one of our trip. Every one of them is awesome, but rainbows are checked off the list already. Kind of figured that would happen. So we're going to keep fishing our way back. We'll get some good rest and get ready for tomorrow. Jesus, I'm getting cold. I'm getting cold. I didn't dress for this. We didn't dress for this, little. He's shivering. He's a shivering boy. Keep me warm, pup. Keep me warm. Keep me warm, pup. You're the best buddy. Well, Heartbreak City on day one. It got too windy. The moon wasn't coming out the way I thought it was, and we were getting blown all over the lake. Unfortunately, day one only came down to a rainbow, which I think we're gonna be able to find more of on this trip. Chateau. And here we go. We are off. W word looks good. Conditions look amazing. Look at how freaking clear this lake is. The reason I chose this species in this place uh, is because it's one of my favorite places to fish and it's a lot of fun. It's one of the coolest places to fish and it's one of the best places that I've ever had the opportunity to catch these fish that we're going after today and that is Mackinac Lake Trout. Our second species that we're on to now is the lake trout, everybody. And the Mackinac Lake Trout was one that was introduced into Oregon back in the early 1900s to control kokanee populations. So they were only put into a specific few lakes in Central Oregon in the High Cascades to try to control the population. And since there has been such a large food source, these fish have gotten huge. Now, I do have a previous history with these fish. A couple years back, we came to this area and I got to put my hands on one of the most incredible fish I've ever seen in my life. And I'm really curious if we can find another giant like we did the first time. We're here. I got my four ounce banana weight, green label herring here. I got a couple of jigs. I got a few things that'll get me along. Let's go find some fish. Wow, look at the color of this water. That is so wicked. So what we're doing here, we're going out to about, I'm gonna go out to about 100 feet at least. Uh, this flat out here in front of us, and I was looking at the Navionics depth chart for this lake and right out here in front of us, 120 foot flat. Goes from about here to about here. So I'm gonna go to the far end of it. The wind's starting to blow a little bit. I'm gonna go to the far end of it. I'm gonna drop my gear down. Basically just a cup plug herring in a way. I'm gonna do a full, full herring. 
and then we're going to just slowly drift with the wind trying to keep our stuff on the bottom best we can and try to see fish on the screen that's the goal okay i'm already seeing fish i don't know if you guys can see those there i got fish here i got fish at 50. we need to get our shit down now okay i'm gonna rig up my herring one through the back i'm gonna leave that one buried okay here we go first marks of the trip and there are fish on the bottom right now 75 feet let's see how fast we can make this happen i still see them so i'm gonna turn my spot lock back on okay there's the bottom 74 feet i'm on bottom i have my rod be across the boat like this so i can really see it really manage it okay so i found a good depth range but i didn't really consider when i was looking at my chart was that uh the lake's about 20 feet low so saying it's about 120 feet i'm about 90 now i'm pretty close to that flat so i'm gonna let the wind blow me for a little bit here see if i can mark some fish looks like we got some kokanee or something a little bit further up but 85 feet i'm down about five feet off the bottom and i'm just gonna start letting the wind push me out into these deeper flats give it a little bit of line each time and really watch my graph that's gonna be the big thing here is watching this graph to see if i can find some fish uh, and then spot lock on them right away and then stay keep my gear in front of them and hopefully get them to bite It's like the first definite laker. Okay, there's my gear. Where's he at? Oh man, that was oof. That was oof. He might still be there, I don't know. Came in on him pretty hot there. Should have probably just kept on the troll. But first definite, 100%, 1000% laker uh, graphed on the, on the screen here under the boat. So there's one on the bottom right there. Okay, we're we're in we're in fish land now. Turn the spot lock off. I'm just gonna keep drifting. Next time I see one, I'm just gonna drift past him. That's my that's my quido now. Oh, there's one up at a 50. There's fish around. We just gotta get in one now. Oh, I got a streaker hard. We're about to get we're about to get bit. We are about to get bit. All the way from the bottom. Come on, no, he went back down, damn it. We gotta get him, we gotta get his attention back. Oh man, he came in hot. I think it's our bait. He came just ripping in and I moved it around and he left. Damn, that sucks. Look at this carnage. I cannot believe that fish didn't bite us. So he shot from the bottom right here, followed us, followed us, and then ran back down. I shouldn't have moved it in here. It was right when I jigged it up and down, he took off. But dang, that sucked. Oh, that was, we're in the right spot. No matter what, this is where we're coming back to. Even if we do go take a little break this afternoon, we've been fishing for quite a while now. Uh, didn't come that prepared. I can see the truck. We're not that far, but I'm thirsty. I'm hungry, I'm hot, I'm sunburned, and I'm heartbroken now. We just, oh, shouldn't have moved it. Got him. Oh my God, he let it go. Oh, he's there, I got him. I got him. I got him. Yep, trolled across one. I saw him come up for it. Felt him come and grab it. I got one. He, he just came off. He just let go at the surface. I'm gonna drop it down just a couple more feet. Never had a hook in him. Literally just hitchhiked all the way to the surface. Baitless. He just hitchhiked it. I, love, I had my drag really loose, really, really loose, trying to just make sure I didn't do exactly what I did and rip the hook out, but he just hitchhiked that thing the whole way up, never really ever got a good hook in him. That was good though. I saw him, I saw him on the thing, I hit spot lock, I started moving, and he swam right up and ate it. So I think that's what it's coming down to. We gotta just find the aggressive ones. Cause so far we have not found those ones yet. And the first one I saw jet off the bottom like that's the first one we hooked. Oh, dang it. I can't believe I lost that fish. Getting out there, using my knowledge of, of these fish and how to fish for them, dialing in my presentation, and then connecting with the fish that early in the morning 
really just loomed over me the rest of the day. I, I messed up that opportunity. I, I didn't let the fish eat enough. I set the hook too quick and ultimately I lost it. Okay, we made it back in. It's time for the midday munch. And on today's menu is a very twisted up, crazy, radical, delicious salmon dip. Base, one quart jar of canned salmon. I eat one of these almost every day. I think this last year we did 80 cans, Brooke and I, which was pretty cool. It was a good, it was a feat. So I'm gonna start with smashing up my can of fish here. Nice hefty dollop mayo. Really not too crazy on it. And a tiny bit of sour cream. Let's get that mixed up, make sure we got the right ratio. Looks pretty good. Looks about like the right consistency. You see, you don't want too much mayo in there. It takes away from all that nice flavor of the fish. Okay. Next, we're gonna add a tiny bit of habanero mango salsa. Just a little splashy do. Homemade Worcestershire sauce. A little bit of the saison. A little bit of green onion in there. A little bit of shallot. There's really no limit to the veggies you can put in this. Sometimes I'll put broccoli, sometimes cauliflower, I mean, whatever. Whatever you got on hand. I pretty much just brought onions and fish. Life of a fisherman. But that's looking pretty good. I really have started to stray away from using, I got cream cheese out, but I started to really stray away from using cream cheese in my dish. Kind of really dominates the flavor and you don't get a whole lot of that salmon flavor or any of that good oil stuff that you put in there. So we're gonna finish it off with a little everything but the bagel seasoning. Bam, munch time. All right, family size Juanitas. Give her a try. Looks super festive. Mm. Tastes exotic. Nice and light and refreshing. Only thing that's missing, pickles or cucumbers. That's it. That's all we messed up today. That's okay. Delish. Okay, back out after lunch. Fresh heron. Got us a fresh heron. Turn that thing through the gills. This one through the back. Time to go fishing. Man, those were good marks. Still in them. I'm hard saying what those were. A couple of hot marks as soon as I got out here. I'm getting in about 53 feet of water. Kind of drifting off into the deeper ends here. So just gonna start start hunting right here. See some stuff a little bit deeper here. What is this? trying everything you guys I just found a giant school of them there's probably five or six of them on the screen they're still there they're still just watching my bait I got bit by one of them really gently and the screen is full of fish right now Ugh. well what a day it's been I'm sunburnt. Freaking lobster legs. Dogs are tired. Sun, got about an hour left of daylight. But we're bailing. Bite really went to hell. I had a lot of opportunities today. But I really think the big thing was today though, my biggest fault was this right here. The bait. Did not have good bait today. I got as good a herring as I could find coming up here. The fish didn't like my bait. I had probably 15 or 20 different follows. Fish jetting all the way up to the bait looking at it and then darting away. And I've seen that here before. I've seen that kind of fish in here before, but I was not hoping it would go that way today. I did not have the right kind of bait. So this sets us up, this tees us up to pull off the trifecta tomorrow. The trifecta 
you'll have to stick around to learn more about and stick around to learn more about the secret bait I'm gonna be using if I catch it. We need to find camp, we need to get to our next lake, we need to wake up early, we need to catch a bunch of fish tomorrow. Smells like smoke. Nice and cool tonight though. Really a lot of moisture in there. It's, it's kind of crazy to think, but a lot of the ground, any low spot that we went through, took us quite a while to find camp, which is kind of par for the course uh, here on Addicted or Stay Fishy, if you follow along on that channel as well. But we found a camp that's right next to the lake we're fishing. Seems like the wind has died. It was really windy as we were trying to find a lakeside camp, but that's kind of why we decided to be up in the woods tonight. It's because it was so darn windy down on the water. But we got a pretty good spot. Time to get set up, get some dinner made. Steak time. We're doing a caveman style tonight. No other utensils but our fork. Because we actually remembered one this time. Oh my god. So juicy. So good. Some of that homemade Worcestershire on there. It was absolutely delicious. Mm. Some great protein after a long, long day of fishing. Tomorrow's gonna be a long one too. Time to eat up. That's a two scoop of the day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three. Oh, yeah. Extremely smoky. You woke up with a bit of a sore throat this morning. <clears throat> you can definitely tell that smoke's getting to you. I've only been in it about an hour. I really, really uh, do not envy those firefighters that are out there fighting these fires, but thank you to all of you who watch these videos and are out there on the front line fighting these big wildfires that burn all over the west coast of the United States this time of year. Um, it's nice though. It's calm. It's going to be epic out there on the lake. It's going to be beautiful the way the, the smoke's kind of settled in on it. So let's drink some coffee and get this camp cleaned up. Let's get out there on the water. Good cup of Joe. What a cool scene. Now, I've never fished on this lake before. Maybe I mean, I was a kid, maybe. But it's gonna be really hard to decipher where the hell to go with the fog like this, but that's okay. It's better than the W word happening, the W word blowing, if you will. But I know we're on the deep end of the lake. The deepest spot in this lake is 15 feet deep. So we're on that side of the lake. I know because it's hot out, those fish are gonna be kind of tucked down and in. And we're gonna go work in these banks looking for fish rolling trying to find us a giant rainbow. So yes, day three is our rainbow day. We caught rainbows on our first day, but on accident. It was a bycatch for the lake that we are on. The place we are now is an entirely different species. Smoke on the water. The trout are gonna die. E -ne 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 -ne. Epic, epic way to start a day. Smoke's just rising off. I can see, definitely see where the fire's coming from out here behind me. Just a huge billow of smoke just coming right at the lake. So a lot of that smoke's laying down in the water. It's just a beautiful setting. 
it's nice and calm. It should be a beautiful freaking day. And I'm going El Natural today. I'm gonna try my best to stick with uh, some more natural presentations here. Again, never fished this lake. I had a little birdie tell me what end of the lake I kind of wanted to be on. And uh, I think that's where we're at. I would imagine, especially because it's the middle of summer, that the shallow end of the lake where it's not more than five, 10 feet is gonna be very, very, very warm. Uh, so we probably do not want to be around that side of the lake. So that being said, I think the side of the lake we want to be on is that way. That's where we're headed. I'm going to start her out by trolling a fly. Maybe a little Rapala behind me, something. A little more on the natural side. See if we can't just find one moseying across the lake. It's going to be a good day, I can feel it. But what sets these fish apart that we're fishing for today as far as rainbows is the size of them. These are a native trout. They, they naturally reproduce in this lake and in the rivers that come into this lake. And they get huge and incredibly beautiful. And I cannot wait to get day three started. Okay, time to get down and dirty. We made it across to the lake. Called my buddy Todd. Got the inside scoop here on uh, where in the lake that we wanted to be. And one thing he mentioned to me is that he thought the jigs would work really good in this lake because we're fishing around all this massive, massive area of flooded timber, which is a dream for me. It's again, the only place I fish like this is in South America and Chile. And I know that it was some of the coolest fishing I've ever done. So I'm gonna move over here into the sticks and start working through all this sunken timber standing up and uh, toss in some jig. It's a pretty sexy looking box right there. One that kind of maybe looks a little crawdaddy. I think that looks pretty good. Right in between a sculpin and a crawdad. Let's see what happens here. This is so cool, everybody. It's so freaking cool. What a dream. Flooded timber, rainbow trout. I've heard tell that there's even some giant largemouth in here. I could see some some guys uh, bass fishing, but crazy thing is, is it's nine feet deep in here. Nine foot deep, right in all this flooded timber. So I'm gonna just be cognizant to cast a circle around me and keep moving. So the water, I just was cruising along, the water seemed to get a little bit clearer and it got almost a degree colder. So I, I really do have a feeling that there might be some feeding fish around here. I'm really kind of, it's so calm and nice out here. I'm just looking for signs of fish. I really want to see some jumping. I want to see some, some bait balls getting busted or something before I really dedicate on an area. I see boats fishing, but nobody's catching. I'm going to keep trying to get to our destination. we got about another two miles to go. And, uh, but now I'm seeing this water color change. I'm seeing the, the temperature change. I know we got to be getting to a fishy spot. There he was, son of a gun. Dang it. Ah, damn it, dude. Come on. I should probably just put a rooster tail on. Instant, instant fish on the rooster tail. Ah, uh, it's a bass. Not our intended species. Largemouth bass first cast with the rooster tail. I think didn't make it like five feet. Cute little guy. Well, good to know. Good to know. That's one more species off the list. An unintended one, but it's a fish nonetheless. I'm counting it. Okay, we got to an area, everybody, and I'm getting this fish, big, big rainbows rolling 360 around me right now. So I hit spot lock. We're gonna stay right here for just a second. I'm gonna just whip this rooster tail around. I don't, the, I, one thing I will say right now is there are so much feed in the lake. I, I Every time I look down, all I, I can see thousands of bugs, thousands of bugs. So I'm kind of worried about that, especially with like the artificial presentations using the spinner or, or something like that, that these fish might be so freaking stuffed full that they're not gonna be going after a spinner or anything like that. They got all that easy food that they'll just like mosey around and, and eat basically. So I'm hoping, really, really hoping 
we can trick one basically get him to want to eat the spinner more than all the bazillion bugs he's following around okay well nothing seems to be working none of my initial strategy nothing artificial i'm seeing is working the way that my friends actually fish here the most is just power bait on the bottom and i don't know if i have the brass cojones to sit here and do that especially out of the kayak i'm in hunt mode so i'm going to fly fishing I'm going back to my old faithful. When the fish are not biting your artificials, a lot of times it's because you need to switch to something different. That being something a little more organic, if you will. A little more of an unwashed presentation. Another day of not so easy fishing. So far, I mean, I, I didn't really expect a summertime trout challenge like this to be so difficult. But again, I think we run in and face the same issues and the same trials and struggles that we face in any kind of fishing trip like this. Is I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I have a lot of techniques with me. I have a lot of strategies. I have a lot of ideas of what to do. But you know, on a lake like this, it's big, and there is a bazillion places these fish can hide. We're obviously in them. I can see them all over the place. I probably spotted about 10 trout already that are probably over 20 inches. Giants, why we're here. But all I know is I've landed each bit of my gear on top of them a million times and I haven't caught one yet. So they're feeding on the surface like crazy. I can't really tell. I'm looking around to try to see what they might be eating. It might be dragonflies, which I don't really have much that imitates a dragonfly. But we're going to head over here into this freshwater inlet. We're going to see if the fish are a little bit bitier. All I know is they're not eating my rooster tails or any of my shallow water presentations. So I got to just keep trying. I don't know what else to do. I can't turn back now. Huge school of them right here, Sean. Do not come over by me. I mean, probably 30 of them. There he was, I had one, I had him. Oh, I had him good too. There's a giant. I'm gonna jig it right in front of him here. Oh my God, I had him. Oh, I had him, that was a big one too, oh my God. Oh. That was huge. Guys, this is really killing me. Oh my God, that was our fish. That was our fish. Oh man, that sucks. Same story as yesterday, almost. I'm tired of the almost. I want a big one in my hand. And so the worst feeling of all is when you do get a shot at a fish and one, you see it, you watch the thing chase it down, you see how big it is. It's the fish you've been fishing for all day. And to watch that thing kick loose and swim away really broke my heart. <sighs> well, super frustrating morning. Very, very frustrating. Only really saw like three fish caught though. Heard somebody hooting and hollering a fish they got. Saw a crap load, but I'm noticing now that it's getting freaking hot. My legs are absolute lobsters. And uh, it's time to go get some lunch. So. Just got off the phone with a client of mine, a good friend of mine, an addicted supporter. And very, very close to here is another area that's much smaller, uh, more of like a creek coming out of the lake uh, that has a bunch of browns and rainbows. So we can check both off the list. So we're out of here. That was plain and simple. Awesome morning. Saw a lot of beautiful fish, but they weren't liking what we were throwing. And I don't have time nor the patience to sit there and throw fish that aren't going to bite. So we're going to load up the kayaks, eat ourselves a little bit of lunch, and move on to our second spot of the afternoon. Should be good though, I'm really excited about this. It sounds like this spot is really cool. It's gonna be Rambo style fishing. Let's go find them.
Now, every single one of these challenges that I've ever done throughout the years has turned into just be exactly that, a challenge. Putting yourself out there like this and the elements that you have to face while you're out there, the wind, the sun, the temperatures, the distances that you're traveling in between trying to find each area with these species makes it what it is. These kind of trips aren't about finding fish, I don't think. I, I think it's pushing your limits. I think it's testing yourself as a fisherman. And variables like we've seen makes every trip so unique. Whenever I'm making burgers, I stick to a pretty strict recipe. I'm not a plain meat guy. Even though we're, we're gotta get these rods out of the way. Even though we're making a really, really high quality meat like elk, I like to have something else mixed in with it to add to the flavor. So we're going a little parm gar, some onion, green onion, or shallot it rather. Pretty good amount of seasoning. We won't be able to taste that stuff. Homemade Worcestershire. Some oyster crackers. And two eggs. Okay, now I'm gonna use my clean camping hand and I'm gonna start a squishing. I'm gonna start the squishing. These ain't your normal average birds here. These are gonna be big birds because we're big burger kind of people. Do something a little bit crazy here, you guys. All hold on tight, hold on to your britches. I'm gonna put our avocado on first so that it doesn't slide out. Yeah, the craft singles are obviously the only way to go on a burger. I'll argue any day of the week, craft singles American cheese is the only cheese that belongs on a burger. Comment below if you disagree. Okay, it's time. Big daddy in the house. Okay, I'm gonna set this down because it's hot. Do a little black garlic hot sauce. A little bit of the Walla Walla Sweet. Little slice and dice. There you have it. There it goes. taking two bites before talking says anything that's a hell of a burger can't catch a fish on this trip worth a damn but i can sure cook The new lake we have high hopes for. It's extremely low, which normally condenses fish. It makes it a lot easier to find the species that you're after, or just a lot easier to find an abundance of fish. But I'm feeling good about this. Let's get the kayaks in the water. Let's go see if we can check another species off. Okay, here we go again. Same old song and dance. Let's see if we can change our game here. This place should be pretty cool. We got a really good look at the area that we're fishing here. And looks really badass so we're motoring across the lake into an area where the lake turns back into a river essentially so we're going to go all the way back up in here it's going to take a while we got a few miles of untouched water and the real reason why we're here in particular is because i know there is a really good mixture of browns and rainbow trout so we're going to get a chance at all of them and i hope we can find them Now that hit like a ton of bricks. That's a big fish, you guys. That's a freaking big one. I have no clue what it is yet. But whatever it is, it's huge. Whatever it is, it's huge. It could be a brown. I had my brown lure out. Oh my God, it is. It's a big brown. It's a really big brown. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is, oh my God, it's huge. It's huge. I'm really trying not to panic right now. 
This is what I've always been dreaming of. This fish right here. Come on, baby. Please. Holy cripes, that thing is massive. Hey. Okay. Oh my god, this is the fateful moment. Come on, baby. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Please. Please. Yes, we got him in the net. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. That is the fish I've been dreaming about my entire life. You see this thing? It's a giant. Yeah, I got a big one. <laughs> we got some friends and fans over there on the bank getting the love out here in Central Oregon. And this is the coolest fish I have ever caught in my life, you guys. I cannot wait to show this to you. Oh, the smile says it all. This thing is incredible. Look at this fish. I am not kidding, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is the fish, especially in my home state, that I have wanted to catch my entire life. I'm so glad we made this move. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that. <laughs> yes. What an incredible fish. Oh my god, I can't believe we finally did it. I again I've been searching for this fish right here my entire life. And this thing could not be a more perfect example of it. Big old hook nose, male brown trout in the high lakes of Central Oregon. <laughs> so cool. What a cool moment in time. Oh wow, what a fish. Later, buddy. We did it. Wrong day, but we did it. With one of the most magnificent creatures I've ever seen in my life. Didn't get a photo of him. I wish I would have. That was so cool. Wow. Brad Swigler got it done. On the move, too, that thing got hit so hard. That brown was so aggressive, it was insane. It came up and just destroyed the freaking Brad Swigler. What a day. What an accomplishment. What a trip. Another really good fish. Oh, this one doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Yeah, this fish doesn't even know it's hooked yet. Okay. Oh, what is that? Can't tell. Really does look like a big bow. Yep, I think it is a big bow. Are we really about to knock off two of the list? Oh, oh, come on, buddy. He's so strong, he's so strong. Oh, he's suffering, look at that, I'm all bent up. I'm all bent up. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeesh. Laneesh, it's another brown, it's another brown. It's another brown, oh my God. A lot of fish swimming around underneath me too. Kind of hit the sweet spot here. Yes, another one in the boat. Look at that thing in the sunlight. Incredible brown. So cool to live in a place we can catch these fish all, all over underneath me. I'm getting this thing back in there. We gotta keep moving. Okay, Sean is on, Sean is on, Sean is on. I'm hurrying up, gonna get over to him, net this fish for him. Hold on, I got the net. Hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming, brother. Coming in hot, coming in hot. Oh, he's got the drone in the air, everybody. This is a hectic moment. Let's see if I can swing through. Here I come, brother. This is a huge fish. Here we go. Oh my god, that's a nice one. Look at this skill, everybody. Look at this skill. Look at the composure Sean is showing. Why oh, am I able to get this fish? Can I bring him over? One more reel. Oh, I think he got him. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm stuck on my depth finder. I got him. I got him. I got him. Well, I got him. Did. And the drones landed? Yep. <laughs> we did it! Bro! Bro! Look at your freaking branch, dude! <laughs> what a freaking stud of a fish. Look at that thing. Can't even get my hand around it. What a beauty. In the last lights of day three. Just an incredible brown trout. Way to go, Sean. 
we kind of broke off and I'm seeing them all under all over under the boat here as we're taking these pictures you guys let's get her back on her way later honey wow what a fish and I really do think there's more here so let's start making a couple circles we still got daylight Thought I was on bottom, just got done taking probably the most wondrous piss ever. Oh, it's not a fish, what happened? Oh, it's totally a fish. Just came off. Okay, back on we go. All right, morning number four. What happened last night is we didn't quite make it as far up that canal as we wanted to because of the wind and the fish that we caught, but there's still a chance to catch some massive rainbows before we leave to go to our fourth destination, which is a couple of hours from here. So we figured instead of getting there late in the afternoon, missing out on that morning bite, we'll catch some morning bite here and drive down there with a smile on our face. So let's grab our stuff, let's head down to the water. Let's go find a fish. Okay, this looks really, really good. Now what we have here is basically the end of the high water mark of the lake. We were probably three corners down last night when we got those fish, and we were trying to make it up into this moving water like this, but we finally found it today. We hiked into it, and uh, here we are. Let's see what's here. Going with the same lure that I used last night. See this really, really badass ledge here down below me. It looks fishy as heck. Now I've chosen here this morning to just use a wiggler and uh, mainly because that's what got the big fish last night. And this is the perfect kind of like plug water. I'm seeing all these big ledges, all these little drop offs where I wouldn't be able to get a spinner, or a jig or anything down and in there other than a bobber. But I don't, there's not many presentations that a big brown will take on a bobber or a big rainbow and this kind of stuff. So I'm just using this wiggler. I'm casting out like 45 degrees and I'm just letting her swing on back to the bank, just using the current. That way it's gonna stay out in front of those fish for as long as possible while I'm swinging it. I can hold it right along that ledge down below us. Work it, work it. Come on, fish. There's gotta be a big old rainbow just chilling like villain. Chilling like villain. Man, this is swinging nicely. I just feel like I'm just gonna get smashed. I'm just, what's that? Oh, I'm kind of just trying to fish it like I'm out of a boat. Getting as long a swing through there, keeping it right in that deep spot with my rod tip going up and down. What a cool setting though. Glad we tried this. It could pay off still. We got a lot of good water down below us here. Man, I can just feel it. This just feels right. You know when you walk into a place and you're like, man, this is it. That's what this feels like. Come on, fish. Oda, come here. We're seeing some fly fishermen just up river of us that are hooking quite a few fish, but they're, seems like they're either catching just very small ones or white fish or something like that because they're using the tiny nymphs, but I'm going for the giants. And I know there's some big ones in here, so I'm gonna start working my way all the way down and around, see if we can't find ourselves a big old trophy. All right, switching to the wiggler. 
Down in the current, just let it swing across. Ooh, that thing is hunting. That wiggler is on the hunt. Giant rainbow right there, just chasing it down. Get ready. Jesus. Got him, got him. Nice fish. That's a nice one. Oh my God, that thing's nice. Oh my God, that thing just attacked it. Oh my God. Yeah, buddy. Yes. Holy crap. Big old wiggler sticking out of his face. What a mean trout. Oh my God, what a fish. What a freaking fish. That is unbelievable. Whew, that was worth all the effort, all the driving, all the work. That is so cool. Later, buddy. Whew. Well, I am very glad we put in the effort to go down there and do that. One more trophy fish off the list. We'd already caught rainbows, obviously, but nothing compared to that one we just caught there. That's what we traveled all this way for. So let's get in the truck. We have a long, long journey ahead of us, and hopefully the witching hour will provide where we're headed and we can mark another fish off the list. You know, back in my day, we didn't have all that fancy running water stuff. We pumped it right out of the ground. Nice jugs. All right, we're en route to our next destination to fish. And uh, came a little undergun for these fish, so we have to stop at Sportsman's Warehouse and pick out a couple lures. Let's check these things out. Man, it feels weird being back in society, living off the land for so long now. Let's get this limit a couple days, but what we're looking for is pretty specific. That's not it. I found exactly what we're looking for. These bad boys. Rapalas. Ooh, that one looks pretty. Ooh, $20, that one looks pretty expensive. That's what that one looks like. Could be worth it though. So what we're gonna go with big bait for big fish. We got some bait, we got our big plugs. Now, it's about time to go. All right, everybody, here goes day number five. Everything is on the line here. We got brook trout and we got bull trout to catch. But all I know now is that we are in a pretty place. We're back on our feet, literally. And we're going to find one of the coolest fish of this trip on this absolutely breathtaking river. The bull trout is a fish that is a landlocked Dolly Varden, essentially. And especially in the areas that we're fishing here, these are fish that migrated up the river years and years ago, and then were trapped in these areas by the building of dams. They're one of the meanest fish out there. They're one of the most aggressive, and they live in some of the most beautiful country in the world. We are officially in bull trout country, everybody. I grew up in this part of the state, and I have never actually thrown a line in the river that we're gonna be fishing today. So just trying to get a feel for it, trying to just kind of see what it looks like, the kind of style it is, how fast it's going downhill. It looks like it's pretty rapid, pretty quick, and fairly clear. I know these fish that are in here can be very big, so I might need to up my pound test. I got a jerk bait, and I got a little twitching jig, which I know works good for the fish I'm after. Flies, I've also heard work really well, so I have some bobbers and flies in my pack if need be, if we start to see a little bit of tough fishing. So without further ado, we are in a beautiful place. Look at this, look at that water, that's fish. Okay, cast number one in day number five. What a unique color of water here. It's just this emerald green, freaking gorgeous. 
Come on, fishies. I know you're in there. Oh my God, a giant just followed it. I didn't know if that was a fish or not, but that was a fish. Oh my God, there he was again. He moved on it. Oh my God, that thing is huge. Right here in close. Wow, that was big. That was really big. Okay, jerk bait time. Let's see how hungry these things really are. Oh, got him! Oh my God, he nailed it. Oh my God, that was, oh my God. Okay, he's gonna come eat it again. Oh my God, oh my God, that was insane. You guys could probably tell by my reaction, that was insane. Huge, huge, huge bull. Chased this thing all the way up to the bank, swallowed it, turned around and somehow came off. But I don't think he felt the hook. Okay, here it goes. Goes right in here. Oh my God, that was savage. That was a savage rundown. Holy cripes. Crap, right, maybe he did feel it. I don't know, but that thing came out of nowhere and absolutely attacked that thing. That was incredible. Oh, no, can't be doing that. Can't be doing that. Jordan might be going swimming right out the gate. <clears throat> well, looks like I'm going swimming. Trying to let my feet dry off after the big polar plunge. Man, that was cool. That was such a big fish. It's nice and it's relieving to know we have a lure that's gonna get fish today. After seeing that, I can't imagine we're gonna go across, especially once we get further and further up river, that we're not gonna find a, some more aggressive fish that'll come eat this thing. And I do not mind going swimming for that lure again. That was not too bad on a 90 degree day. A little painful, but that's what you get for snagging up. Oh, got him, got him. Got him. Don't even think he knows he's hooked yet. See him out there? He's trolling sideways at, right at me. He hasn't even taken a run yet. Oh, that's a pretty looking fish. Hey, we heard you. Little likes this one. Shh. I thought I was snagged there for a second. You could see me whipping on it in the chest camera. As I was bringing it across, I started to let it just swing and it just stopped. And I thought it was stuck on there, but nope. That's a big freaking fish. Look at him. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Give him a little bit of line, walk up river here. Oh, come on, baby, we need you. We need you, baby bull. We need you, baby bull. Come back to Papa. I don't know, I don't wanna stress out the line too much. I'm only using eight pound. Okay, come on, buddy. Man, that's a nice fish. That's a good fish. Look at how cool he looks. So strong. These things never give up. They remind me of a chum salmon. And we're leadered. We did it. We freaking did it. Oh my God. That is so awesome. Wow. Look at him. Let's give him a little dip really quick. Just look at this trout. What a beautiful bull. Look at these spots along his cheeks. The quintessential white fin tips. That golden brown tail. Look at that coloration. And you can literally see the teeth marks from the other bull trout. There's bull trout big enough in here to even eat this little guy. See you later, buddy. He was all full of piss and vinegar. This river also has brook trout in it. Our main, our main list of fish was gonna be browns, rainbows, bulls, brookies, and lake trout. The lake trout we almost got. We still have a chance to get the brookies, but check the bull trout off the list. Yes. Woo, what a relief after all that work driving two and a half hours to this new area. We got the fish we came for. And we got the fish we came for on the first hole. I think that's probably the biggest achievement here. We didn't have to work all day for it. So I do, at this point, have a pretty darn good feeling that we might find quite a few fish in here today because that was two big fish in the same spot. That's what I'm talking about. Let's find another one. Okay, really cool spot up here at the top of the rapid. 
Got this nice deep hidey hole. I like the look of it. Oh, that's so fishy, oh my goodness. Definitely helps when you can't see the fish biting. Instant replay back to that first one I lost. I definitely, oh my, oh my even God. Brooke running right the camera mentioned oh that God. I ripped it right out of the fish's oh mouth. God. And she is not wrong, because I sure did. But I can't see these fish underneath the glare of this wave. So I think it will be a little bit better about that this time. It worked on the last one. I couldn't see it and actually hooked it. Okay, no fishing spot number two. Let's go see what upriver's got waiting for us. Well, the trail is kind of veered up and away from the river, but that's one sex bucket down there. It's got that all those big boulders in the tail out. There's a big shaded area up under there, just a great little pursuit spot for a big predatory fish like we're looking for. That's fishy, looks like the trail busts down to it, so let's go get a cast in there. Look at this spot. Holy moly. I think I might get one here. My fingers are crossed. Okay, I'm gonna start. I don't know. I'm gonna start right here in front of me. That spot looks pretty good. Nothing on cast number one. Went with the twitching jig first just because it's kind of more of the water for it. Kind of a back eddy little slough with a lot of up, up royals, boils and royals, I call it. And it's a little easier to cast into that tight area. Right in there. Oh my God, there he was. Holy lit me up. Yikes, that was a jolt. Never touched anything else in there again. Definitely was not bottom. Start working my way down. Time to try the jerk bait. Man, that's fishy. <sighs> Moving on. Oh my goodness. Look at the size of these freaking pine cones. What the hell is this? That is bigger than my head. That's badass. Souvenirs. Woo. I think we're gonna hook another one here. What do you guys think? I knew that hike was gonna pay off. Sometimes you put in a lot of the work and you find the fish. That's exactly what just happened there. Just a little half nip. A little half nip showing. I don't know, this is getting pretty tough. It's probably at least 85, 90 degrees out right now. It's like freaking fishing in an oven, even on the shaded side. I'm really glad we're not over there. We're gonna keep going up a couple more miles till we run out of water. I'm gonna try to change plans. We got one more species to catch. We checked that bull trout off. Brook trout really do like this more high elevation, fast moving and brushy water like this. So we're in the right place to catch one of those. Might have to switch gear and start really targeting them. Let's go find us a brookie. I feel like there could be something like this right here in front of me. Yep, yep, oh my God. Get that camera ready. Right under this rock, right in front of me. That thing came at that a million miles an hour. Oh my gosh. That was such an aggressive chase to not bite. There he is. Oh my God. Oh my God, get over here. Oh my God. I don't even want to say right now what I have on. I'm not joking, it's 10 pounds. Oh my God. This is the biggest bull trout I've ever had on in my entire life. 
Look at this, I can't move him. He's just slowly lumbering up to me. Problem is, is once he realizes he's hooked, he is gonna go full on AP. Trying to keep him nice and deep down towards the bottom of the river. Oh God, that was aggressive. That was very aggressive. I'm gonna just keep him down by the bottom of the river. He'll feel comfortable to start swimming up, which is exactly what he's doing. I'm just keeping constant pressure, trying to make him not even realize that he's hooked. Okay, here we go. Oh my God, it's huge. Holy crap, it's huge. Holy crap, it's huge. Oh my God. No, he's leaving. He's totally leaving. Oh my God. Nearly, nearly just got spooled. And I'm about to. I'm about to. Holy crap. That was the most insane run I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, I remind you I'm using 10 pound test. Or excuse me, eight pound for all of you light line enthusiasts out there. This is what it gets you. The largest fish of your life and your only lure this color. Oh God, it's working though. I got him tricked back up here again. I got a big enough belly in my line. That was the most insane run I've ever seen in my life. Holy crap, it's, oh my God. No, he's leaving. He's totally leaving. Oh my God. Okay, we're really gaining on him now. I think I got him over the ledge. Got him right over, I felt like it was harder than ever. I got him over the end of the tail out. I just did it. All, he was all the way over that cusp, over in that, in that white water. And I fought him all the way back across, riding that little surf line, that little hydraulic across the tail out, and I got him. He's coming. I gotta take my shoes off. I gotta get in with this fish. There's no way I'm gonna land this from the bank. Okay, here we go. What a fight. I am like dripping sweat right now. Mainly with anxiety, mostly with excitement, and then a big part with fear. Okay, come to Papa's. Come to Papa's. Come to Papa's. Get him up out. Hey, all I gotta do is get that head out of the water and I'll have control of him. Man, that thing is just a freaking eel. Just an eel of a fish. Got him. I got him. I don't got him. I got him. I got him. No, I don't. Oh God. This is, this is, this is scary. This is scary. I got him. I got him. I got him. I freaking got him. Oh my God. Wow. What an incredible marble of a fish. Oh my God. One of my very biggest bull trout of my life and the, the fight in general, you guys, I, I mean, I'm sure if, if I watch this, I know I'm gonna be rewinding that fight because it's one of the most memorable of my life. Oh my God, it's huge. Holy crap, it's huge. No, he's leaving. He's totally leaving. To fight that thing back up the rapids the way we did on eight pound test, it's a story I'll never stop telling and it's mainly one I'm so glad that we all got to share together here. Woo, he kicked loose. Biggest bull trout of my life right there. Heck yeah, everyone. Well, I must say today was a hard fought win. Really kind of just caps off the essence of this trip in general. It's been so much work, so much heat, really, really tough conditions, super hot every day. Good evening, good mornings of fishing, but nevertheless, today was one of the best days. One of my most memorable days of fishing in a long time. Those bull trout were incredible. And the way they fight, the way they ate really, I mean, it was full on attack mode. Day five was an awesome day and now it's in the books. Everyone, I want to thank you all so much for being along with us on these journeys. This is definitely one of the favorite series that I've ever made here on YouTube. And being able to take people along and, and share these experiences uh, with the viewers, with the people that love to follow along with this stuff is a special thing for me. It's great to share these memories and it's so incredible to keep getting to go on these trips and push our limits and see where the world takes us. So again, thank you all so much for tuning into this video. You all stay fishy. We'll see you out there.